Chairman Powell yesterday said that inflation is largely a factor. The inflation we're seeing is largely a factor of the reopening of the economy and supply chain issues that will fade. But he also said that we are some ways off from the substantial further progress the Fed's using as a marker for when it wants to start tapering. So question one, do you agree with Chairman Powell on inflation that it is going to be very temporary? And question two, where do you think we are on that substantial further progress continuum? You know, on the you said very temporary. I think that's the the key debate here. Uh, I think uh, it's clear that some of the inflation will be temporary. How much and how much feeds into a more persistent process is really the question that the uh, committee has to wrestle with uh, going forward here. So I think we're we're you know already above our target on core PC inflation. The committee, according to the summary of economic projections, is projecting uh, three percent. That's excluding food and energy prices. Uh, that's more inflation than we've seen in a long time in the U.S. And I think some of that will uh, hang on and, and persist through 2022. 20, uh, and we had hotter uh, reports uh, than we anticipated recently. So there's some uh, possibility that we would ratchet up our expectations for inflation in 2021 and 22. Um, so this is a different situation than we faced uh, in the past. Um, on, the, on the labor market, I think we have made uh, substantial progress. Uh, we've uh, come a long way from where we were last uh, December. And all indications are by anecdotal reports that uh, the labor market is going to continue to improve. A lot of people are looking toward September, October when schools are back in session for further uh, improvements. So I think uh, we're in great shape on labor markets as far as having been able to uh, make progress uh, since last uh, December. It's not fully healed. It's not fully uh, done. But, uh, but have we come a long way since December? I think the answer is yes. Well, in terms of that progress, then, do you think tapering may have to come sooner than most people anticipate, perhaps uh, pulling it forward into the fourth quarter of this year? Uh, well, the committee's going to uh, debate that in earnest now at the July meeting. Uh, I would emphasize there are lots of parameters around a taper decision. Uh, the starting date is only one part of it. Uh, the pace of tapering is another part. MBS versus Treasuries, um, and we can talk about that if if you want. And and uh, but I think the most important thing and uh, that I've been stressing here is the idea that. Uh, you probably don't want to be on automatic pilot in this situation. This is a really fast-growing economy, uh, lots of things happening both in the U.S. and globally. Uh, and I don't think we're, we have the luxury of being able to just uh, go on to automatic pilot and, and say that we're never going to change uh, the pace of purchases. I think we have to be more state contingent than that. Uh, because uh, we're not quite sure where this inflation process is going to go. We need some optionality uh, on the upside uh, with respect to possible inflation shocks. Well, the chairman did say again yesterday that if inflation did seem to be persistent, the Fed wouldn't hesitate to act and that you have the tools to deal with inflation. What do you say to critics on Wall Street who say, yes, you have the tool to deal with inflation, you raise interest rates and then historically plunge the economy into recession? Yeah, that's exactly the kind of uh, logic, I think, that uh, you want to avoid, uh, that uh, you get too far uh, out of alignment with what's actually happening in the economy, and then, then you really have to react uh, uh, more strongly than you'd like and uh, possibly causing disruption in the economy. So you don't want to be in that situation. I think the risk management here is that if, if inflation does come back down uh, in 2022, uh, we're in great position for that. We're, we're exactly uh, positioned for that. But if it doesn't, uh, we're not in such great position. So I think for that reason, um, we want to have some flexibility on this taper. 
There are a lot of people who look at what the Fed is doing and say uh, the economy is opening very fast, as Jim Bullard says. Uh, so why do we need $120 billion a month, $40 billion of that in mortgage bonds? What do we get for that that we wouldn't get for less? Yeah, I think it's a good question. Uh, you know, we we took this policy uh, decision in April, March and April of 2020. Uh, that was a very different situation. The pandemic was uh, just getting going, and uh, it looked like there could be a financial crisis. Uh, people were talking Great Depression. Uh, so that was the context in which uh, this decision was made. But now you're in a very different situation. Uh, 15 months later, where the pandemic's coming under very uh, sharp control here. You've got uh, growth in real GDP projected to be 7% in the U.S. this year, uh, faster than China has typically grown in recent years. Uh, you've got uh, bottlenecks and shortages uh, everywhere. Uh, so this is a very different situation. Um, uh, Treasury market functioning and other financial markets seem to be functioning very well. Financial stress indexes are way uh, are back down to normal and have been uh, for some time. So I think uh, I think we're in a situation where we can uh, we can taper and and I think setting those parameters uh, the right way. Uh, we don't want to jar markets or anything, but I think it is time uh, to end these emergency measures. Well, there's certainly a lot of concern out there on Wall Street that uh, the Fed has sort of eliminated price discovery and the uncertainty over when you're going to taper is setting the stage for possible market accidents. Are you worried about uh, assets? Uh, I mean, I love price discovery just as much as an next person. Uh, I'm a little skeptical that there isn't any uh, on Wall Street. It's true that uh, monetary policy is part of the equilibrium, uh, so uh, traders have to factor that in. I know it's a tough job. Uh, but um, but I think we've uh, come a long way with our transparency and our uh, ideas about constantly communicating and trying to do our best to uh, to inform markets about where the uh, monetary policy debate is and uh, where it's likely to go, at least short term. But we don't know the, how the data is going to come in any better than anyone else. And for that reason, uh, you are going to get slight adjustments uh, all the time. I'm out here in Idaho at the Rocky Mountain Economic Summit with a lot of CEOs and economists, and the CEOs are all asking the economists, why does the Fed think there's no inflation when gas prices are way up, when home prices are way up? Now, I know that raising interest rates isn't going to bring down gasoline prices, but how do you keep inflation expectations anchored when the real economy inflation is something that people are starting to talk about? Yeah, this is, uh, the, like I said in my opening comments, this is a different situation than we've seen in the U.S. Uh, for quite a while. This is quite a bit of inflation, more than we're used to, and you kind of have a, uh, a generation that hasn't seen very much inflation. So um, I do think it will be a challenge to keep inflation expectations in check. I do take some solace that uh, markets are, seem to be giving us a vote of confidence based on the tips market, uh, uh, that we're going to bring this uh, under control and, and continue to have good inflation outcomes for the U.S., but it does require management and it does require us uh, to move appropriately uh, on uh, issues like uh, tapering asset purchases and, and talking about uh, when we would lift off of zero at some point down the road. I'm wondering how you think about and factor COVID into your economic projections now, especially since uh, Missouri seems to be this, the poster boy state for not getting vaccinated and having cases rise. Uh, we track it every day. Uh, I, I, I like to look at the, the main indicator, uh, uh, deaths per day per million uh, in the U.S. and compared to other countries around the world. It has come down. Uh, dramatically and is projected to continue to fall. Uh, it's true not everyone is uh, vaccinated. I think that 
Uh, it would be unrealistic to think every single person is going to get vaccinated. That's not how this, uh, that's not how this works. Uh, but I'm hopeful that we can get to the, a level that will bring the uh, virus under uh, clear control. I think that is happening. Uh, um, uh, I also uh, would encourage people to think about the vaccination. I think this is a preventable uh, uh, disease at this point, uh, there's no reason that really now that we have to have uh, very many deaths from uh, from COVID-19. Uh, one last question. I want to go back to something John Farrow said at the beginning of the show, quoting a congressman. Uh, in the summary of economic projections, uh, you see long-term economic growth at 1.8 percent. If we're spending all this money, why are we only getting 1.8 percent growth? Uh, what's the benefit to the real economy from everything that you're doing over the longer run? You know, that is a great question to ask. I think what we're looking at here is uh, uh, really fantastic growth in the U.S. during 2021. Seven percent is the current uh, projection of, of various uh, prognosticators. Uh, and and uh, our own staff here. Um, and then I think above trend growth in 2022, above trend growth in 2023. So you've got a period here where GDP uh, is passing the previous pre-pandemic peak in uh, total output produced in the U.S. economy. That's happening right now as I'm speaking. And then uh, it is projected to go above the previous trend line. So you're really looking at uh, quite a strong U.S. economy over the next couple of years. And I would hope that some of that would feed through to the underlying uh, growth rate. I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll see uh, productivity growth uh, switch now to a higher growth uh, regime, a higher productivity growth regime, because we have experimented with uh, new ways of doing business, new technologies, and some of that will get into basic processes in the U.S. and, and lead to faster productivity growth. So that, a lot of that seems to be happening. Uh, the data is very volatile right now, but I'd be hopeful that the medium-term growth rate for the U.S. economy would be somewhat higher.